Hello, this is Mark Tobias. Today we're going to demonstrate the operation of the laser shield plug and go alarm system at a typical uh, condominium residence. Uh, we're going to show how the system is armed, how it normally trips, and then we're going to do a walkthrough again and show how to easily defeat this system that anyone with a few hundred dollars and no expertise can accomplish. This condo is protected by uh, conventional mechanical locks and Medeco deadbolts. So the question is, how do we protect our residences? The way we do that is with alarm systems. And so this alarm system has been set up with two trips, as we'll see, to detect entry. We've placed the laser shield master alarm unit uh, in the front of this residence for ease in operation and demonstration. This unit can actually be placed anywhere and usually would be placed in a bedroom so that you could access it at night for an emergency. All of the laser shield trips have panic buttons on them. Uh, if this is pressed, uh, it'll immediately notify the police uh, through a dispatch center if you subscribe to that service. So we have a master alarm unit, and then we've put in two infrared motion sensors, uh, which we'll show in a moment. This master alarm unit is controlled by a wireless key fob. It's a very convenient way of enabling and disabling the system, but it's also very insecure. So the question is convenience over security, as is noted in the detailed report that accompanies this video. So now we're going to show the typical placement of motion sensors. I've placed one on top of the fireplace that's aiming across the dining room that controls the glass sliding door entry uh, to the backyard. The other trip, as you can see, is in the bookcase. And this would be a typical installation. All of the infrared motion sensors are the same footprint. As you can see, when the red light comes on, it shows that it's actually tripping. Idle status is now. And now when we trip it, it, it the, uh, the red light will turn on. We can also bypass this trip by pushing a button on the front of the alarm. So now for nighttime use, for example, this trip can be bypassed, so it will it'll detect, but it won't send a signal to the master alarm unit. So let's arm that again. Satellite number one is active. And as you can see, we have this trip, and we have a trip mounted on top of the fireplace. So now we'll do a demonstration. We'll set up the system. And I'll walk back into the residence, and you'll see how it trips normally, and then we'll just show how to defeat it. We're now going to arm our demonstration laser shield. Um, this is not connected to a phone line, so the first thing you'll note is the voice prompts will tell you that there's a fault in the system, that the system is not disconnected. But it will arm anyway because in some cases, um, customers may not want to pay the monthly monitoring fee and be connected into an alarm center. So in that case, it will make noise locally to scare off intruders. So I'm going to push the arm button, and I can do this from up to 250 feet away from this unit. Laser shield disarmed. No phone line. Fix the condition or press the arm button again to force arming. So I can bypass the system. I'm going to press the arm button again. And now it's going to count down arming. for one minute uh, to give me an exit delay. So we're going to seconds. count, let it count down. And we're going to leave the residence and let it set up. The laser shield system has now been armed. We're going to enter the residence. And uh, you'll hear as soon as we enter the trip in the bookcase is going to catch us. And it caught us almost instantly. The trip is about 30 feet from the door, which is excellent range. And in one moment, it's going to actually uh, 
would notify the alarm center if it was connected to a phone line. And as you'll hear, it makes enough noise to scare off a burglar. And I press the disarm button. Unreported. Alarm. Laser shield disarmed. No phone line. Now, we're going to set this up again and show again coming through the glass patio door, same problem. Okay, I'm standing outside on the patio and I'm going to now go through the glass door that is protected by the other trip and it should get me almost immediately when I walk through the glass door. And again, the alarm has been set off. It's excellent range on the passive infrared detectors. And so now I will uh, turn the system off by pressing the disarm button on the little wireless pendant. Now we're going to redo this. We're going to arm the system again, only this time we're going to bypass it by blinding the receiver with an inexpensive transmitter. We're now going to demonstrate the primary vulnerability with the laser shield system. As noted in the report, this system is totally wireless. That means that all the communications internally between the motion sensors and the master alarm unit are all wireless. As well, arming and disarming with the key fobs is wireless. So if you blind the receiver in the master alarm unit, the system never sees an alarm status. They never see a trip, they don't see the system turned on, they don't see the system turned off. So what we're going to demonstrate is the use of a UHF portable. This one is made by Motorola but there are several of them available. This is a couple hundred dollars new uh, but can be purchased uh, much cheaper than that on the internet used. Um, these are commonly available. The frequency information is available in a public database uh, at the Federal Communications Commission. If I enter the residence keying this portable and never unkey it while I'm inside, it will blind the receiver in the master alarm unit. And I, as you'll see, I can walk around, I can uh, trip the motion sensors, but the receiver never gets the report because the receiver is blinded. And then I'll leave the residence, the alarm will never go off. Okay, now I'm going outside onto the patio, I'm closing the glass door. Um, the camera is pointed at the door and the uh, motion sensor that's going to catch me coming in. I'm going to key the transmitter so that it doesn't see me or the cameraman. Okay, now I'm going to walk inside. I'm keying the transmitter. And as you can see, the motion sensor on the fireplace is tripped. It's seeing me. It's probably also seeing the cameraman. I'm going to walk around. I'm keying the walkie-talkie. I leave it keyed. And so the receiver is not seeing uh, the transmissions from the motion sensors. The fireplace is tripping. The second motion sensor that's in the bookcase is also tripping. And so they're sending the report, but the receiver is not receiving it. And so I can actually exit the house, and it'll never know I was here. And now I'm going to let off the transmitter, and it's going to get me. And now I will go into alarm mode. There's a timeout that I didn't disable on the walkie-talkie that's a 60-second timeout. But you could see that the system is uh, in arm status. And once I stopped keying the transmitter, uh, the system received the report and went into alarm mode. This has been a demonstration of the laser shield 
uh, plug-and-go alarm system. You do have to understand that there are inherent security vulnerabilities in any wireless system, not just LaserShield, but all other manufacturers that rely on totally wireless systems.